To wszystko skłaniało uczonych do przekonania, że mają przed sobą myślącego potwora, że jest to rodzaj milionokrotnie rozrosłego, opasującego całą planetę protoplazmatycznego Morza Mózgu, który trawi czas na niesamowitych w swej rozpiętości teoretycznych rozważaniach nad istotą wszechrzeczy. A wszystko to, co wychwytują nasze aparaty, stanowi drobne, przypadkowo podsłuchane strzępy owego toczącego się w wieku iście w głębinach, przerastającego wszelką możliwość naszego pojmowania gigantycznego monologu. Stanisław Lem was born in the Polish city of Lwów, formerly Lemberg, the capital of Galicia, on the 12th of September 1921 to a family with Jewish ancestry. His father, Samuel Lem, a doctor of laryngology, and his wife Sabina lived at number 4 Brajarowska Street, where the father maintained his medical practice. As an only child, the son haunted his father's vast medical library containing many thousands of detailed anatomical plates whose precision and intricacy would later mark his own literary work. The science fiction pioneers Jules Verne and H.G. Wells were greatly admired by the young Lem. In one of his first childhood books, he read about a boy who took an elevator that rebelled and soared straight through the roof of the house into outer space. 1939. Lem turns 18 and enrolls at the Lwów Medical Institute just as the German troops capture the city. Soviet Red Army troops join Nazi Germany in the brutal occupation of Lwów. Arrests and indiscriminate deportations begin. 1941. With Operation Barbarossa, Germany invades the Soviet Union and retakes Lvov. Attacks commenced at once against the Jews, followed by the establishment of the Lvov Ghetto. Using false documents, the Lem family escape incarceration. The Lem scholar Agnieszka Gajewska argued that beneath Lem's bold and grotesque visions of the future lay buried the traces of his own traumatic past a series of terrifying experiences, which included escaping death in a pogrom. Lem avoided talking about these terrifying events throughout his lifetime, and yet they would return to haunt his writings. 1945. In the aftermath of World War II, the borders of Poland shift once again. Lwów becomes Lviv and officially becomes part of the USSR. Lem's entire family is repatriated to Kraków. He resumes his medical studies at the Jagiellonian University, but soon quits without a diploma, for fear of being conscripted as a military doctor. He begins work as a scientific research assistant whilst publishing his first literary works. 1948. Lem's first novel about a young doctor who, under Nazi-occupied Poland, joins the staff of an insane asylum that is soon to be liquidated by the Germans. Originally suppressed by the Polish censors and not published until 1955, this will lead Lem to focus on the less censored genre of science fiction. 1950. A chance encounter in the mountain resort of Zakopane with a Warsaw-based publisher earns Lem a contract to write his first science fiction novel the Astronauts, which becomes hugely popular. Lem became truly productive after 1956, when the de-Stalinization period took place in the Soviet Union and led to the Polish thaw. 
Over the next three decades, he publishes a vast body of writing, from poetry to novels, fables, fictions, metafictions, a huge philosophical treatise on the relations of human beings and machines, literary criticism, a volume of reviews of non-existent books, an experimental detective novel, essays on cybernetics, cosmology, genetic engineering, game theory, along with radio plays and screenplays. In 1979, the Soviet astronomer Nikolai Stepanovich Chernik named one of the cruising asteroids between Mars and Jupiter, 3836 Lem. On the 27th of March 2006, Stanislav Lem dies in Kraków. Oblubienica i morderczyci. Przestał oddychać. Położyłam się przy nim, objęłam go mocno, bo póki żył, nie byłam pewna siebie. Mój obowiązek sięgał ostatniego tchu. Mój obowiązek sięgał ostatniego tchu, bowiem wyrok króla musi być wykonany, nawet i w agonii. Po północy śnieg przestał padać. Upodobnił mnie do otoczenia. Niczym suknia ślubna, której nigdy nie założyłam. I leżałam tak w świetle i ciemności. Przez dwa dni. I dwa lata śnieżycy. Która pokryła nasze łoże prześcieradłem nietajającym. A dnia trzeciego, roku trzeciego, wzeszło słońce. Lem was as much a philosopher as he was a novelist. He found a way to extend a vision of the universe into something capable of granting transcendence to those who surrendered themselves to it and allowed themselves to perhaps glimpse their own place in it. 